In the wake of the Paris attacks, Muslim organizations around the world strongly condemned the actions of the terrorists involved. Thousands took to social media to declare the atrocities were not done in their name or in the name of their faith. Despite this, the 2016 campaign trail has boiled over with rhetoric that feeds into fear-mongering over Islam. You know, if there's a, a rabbit dog running around your neighborhood, you probably not going to assume something good about that dog. Should there be a database system that tracks the Muslims here in this country? There should be a lot of systems beyond database. I mean, we should have a lot of systems. And that may be having an impact on the psyche of the American public. When polled, 56% of Americans say the values of Islam are at odds with America's values and way of life. She's entering the country. 38% of respondents in our NBC News Survey Monkey poll say they strongly disapprove of the decision to increase the number of refugees coming into the United States. Joining me now is Dahlia Mogahed, uh, the co author who speaks for Islam uh, and the director of research at the Institute for Social Policy and Understanding. Dahlia, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. So, why do you think the United States is having a different reaction today? to, uh, to uh, Muslim Americans than they did after 9-11? After I think it's a difference in leadership. Uh, we have to, whatever policy differences we might have with George W. Bush, he really took a moral stance after 9-11 and made the strong case for the fact that these attacks were uh, carried out by terrorists, by criminals, and that an entire faith group should not be blamed for them. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, what's happening today, because of an election season, we have people capitalizing on Americans' fears to, uh, to, to win votes and, and to push forward bad policies. What, um, let, me, let me just have you do some of the basics. You, you saw there, 56% of Americans say that Islam is not part of the American way of life. Right. Tell, tell, tell them why they're wrong. Well, why they're wrong uh, is because 7 million um, Americans consider Islam their faith, and they are law-abiding citizens. They contribute to this country. Uh, they are job creators. They are doctors, lawyers. Um, they are the most likely faith group in America, actually, to uh, say that attacks on civilians are never justified. What's interesting is the timing of this poll. When you look over the past 14 years, you notice something very interesting. The spikes in anti-Muslim sentiment among the American public do not correlate with actual terrorist attacks. Now in this case, of course, ISIS is an exception, but if you, before ISIS came uh, on the scene, the Boston bombing did not increase anti-Muslim sentiment even by one point. Mm -hmm. Even 9-11 did not increase anti-Muslim sentiment. What does increase, what does correlate with anti-Muslim sentiment is the run-up to the Iraq War and the 2008 and 2012 elections. So anti-Muslim sentiment is a manufactured It's a political phenomenon. phenomenon. You Absolutely. believe it's a political phenomenon, a campaign phenomenon, and nothing else. It is. Uh, it is a domestic issue around elections and around the drum up to bad decisions like the Iraq War. So let me ask you uh, the question that you were supposed to be asked or you were supposed to answer in your book. Who speaks for Islam? Because that does seem to be part of this debate. And it's sort of like when you hear, you, do, you will hear American leaders going, we need more Muslim leaders to speak out against uh, ISIS, to speak out against Al-Qaeda, to speak out against these radicals who are trying to pervert your faith. Right. The question we asked in the book, Who Speaks for Islam, is based on the idea that a, a fringe minority claims to speak on Islam mm -hmm. and that we're not, we're ignoring the silenced majority. And it's not that they aren't speaking out, it's that we're not listening. It was interesting, you said silenced. Silenced. Yeah, not silent. No, You feel like they have silent. been silenced. Who has silenced them? You think well, we're not doing enough to understand? Vocal extremists have silenced them. Um, a media that isn't interested in the mainstream has silenced them. But when you actually ask the vast majority of Muslims, you find that our, our values are very compatible, that they are at least as likely, if not more likely, to condemn terrorism. But I think we should take a step back and ask a different question, which is, is it justified to demand that Muslims condemn terrorism? Now, that, that might sound a little, a little radical, just okay. even asking it. All right. And the reason I, I say that is this. Condoning the killing of civilians 
is to me about the most monstrous thing you can do. And to be suspected of, of doing something so monstrous simply because of your faith seems very unfair. Now when you look at the majority of terrorist attacks in the United States, according to the FBI, the majority of domestic terrorist attacks are actually committed by white male Christians. And that's just the facts. When those things occur, we don't suspect other people who share their faith and ethnicity of condoning them. We assume that these things uh, you know, outrage them just as much as they do anyone else. And we have to afford that same assumption of innocence to Muslims. If you could say one thing to Donald Trump, what would you say to him? I would say you don't understand the Constitution and you are wrecking freedom in America. And what would you tell him to read or do to understand Islam? I don't want him to understand Islam. I want him to understand the Constitution um, because he's getting that wrong. Even, even He doesn't have to like Muslims or like Islam or understand Islam. But what I do expect of a presidential candidate is to conduct himself according to the basic uh, principles of, of constitutional law and to suggest something like registering people according to their faith is absolutely outrageous. And the rhetoric we're hearing today should alarm every American. This is not about Muslims. This is not about the 1%. This is about the 100%. It's about every American who cares about freedom and democracy in this country because our rhetoric is a, is a, is a reflection of the quality of our democracy. And, and I think that right now uh, we are in a lot of trouble. Dahlia Mokahed, I will have to leave it there. Uh, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you for having me. All right. Nice to hear from you. Later in the hour, we're going to discuss the 